Hello, I'm a student at Chongqing International Academy, and I'm Iyohe, a member of NENM, an Economic Management Finance Club. Today, I'm going to have a short lesson which is about monopoly, the eighth chapter of the Barron's AP Microeconomics. Starting the lesson, we first need to understand the definition of monopoly. What do you think is a monopoly? Well, some might think of a board game, but people who are interested in economics might definitely know that monopoly is also used in economics. A monopoly is a market structure where one single firm constitutes an entire industry and no close substitutes exist for consumers. Microsoft provides the greatest example of a software company that holds a natural monopoly on its market. Monopolies have downsloping demand curves with marginal revenues less than the demand as the graph above which shows an interesting difference between the perfect competition, a theoretical market structure in which there are many buyers and sellers, identical products. This means that instead of the equation MR equals C, which was normally used in the perfect competition, the marginal revenue is less than the demand in the monopoly, which can be written in the equation like this. Nextly, we may see how much competitive each firms are with the spectrum of market competitiveness, which is above. And as we see, the monopoly is at the right end of the line, which means it is the least competitive type of market. And this may be sure because monopoly is a firm that is a single seller of a product. Comparing to that, the perfect competition is the most competitive type of market. Nextly, these are some characteristics of a monopoly, which can also be few of the reasons why monopoly has high barriers to entry. The government power, resource control, economies to scale, and copyrights or patents are that. Now, here is the elastic and inelastic range of monopoly. A profit-maximizing monopoly will always produce in the elastic range of the demand curve. Putting the vertical line from MR to the demand as standard, the positive part might be the elastic range, and the negative part would be the inelastic range. A monopoly is a unique in that it is both the firm and the industry and price maker, which is also different with the perfect competition. Then let's see how to draw a graph in a monopoly. As all profit maximizing point, a monopolist determines price at where MR equals MC, which is point A. Then we should draw a vertical dashed line at the profit maximizing quantity point A extended down to the quantity of 5 and back up to the demand curve point C. And then horizontally to the price axis point G, where the price is $5. And if we put point B, which is where the vertical line ATC meets, and then draw a horizontal dashed line where it is $4, the profit is shown in the graph to be the yellow rectangular area, which means the economic profit equals to the total revenue minus the total cost. Before getting through the that way loss, we have to remember something. Aside from perfect competition, none of the other market structures is productively or allocatively efficient, leading to a misallocation of resources which also counts in a monopoly. An allocative efficiency is producing the exact amount of output that society wants, where P equals MC. Monopolies, however, produce where P is larger than MC. Besides that, productive efficiency is when products are being produced at the lowest minimum cost, where P equals minimum ATC. Monopolies, however, produce where P is larger than ATC. So while it is good to be a monopolist in both in the board games and in real life, it is generally bad for consumers in society overall. Then now, we can know that there is a that way loss in a monopoly. For help labeling those that way loss, imagine drawing an arrow pointing the output as if it were a competitive market. The that way loss might be the green area, remembering that the that way loss is always below the demand curve, above the marginal cost, and to the left the profit maximizing quantity. It is important to graph several different versions of monopoly graph. This graph has a difference between the previous graphs that the marginal cost the average cost and the long run average total cost curves have all the same perfectly elastic slope. But we still have to remember that firms produce at MR equals MC and the profit is calculated in the same way. So let's go through some questions from this graph. Please pause the video if you want to answer each question. The first question, what is the profit maximizing quantity? As I said, the profit maximizing quantity is where MR equals MC, so the answer might be 10. 
Second, what is the price at the profit maximizing quantity? The answer would be $5. Third, locate the area and calculate the economic profit at the profit maximizing quantity. As we learned that the profit is total revenue minus total cost, the economic profit will be $20, which is the area of ABGD colored in yellow. Fourth, let's locate the area and calculate the debt weight loss at the profit maximizing quantity. As you learned as the debt weight loss in the monopoly equals to the monopoly revenues minus profits, the answer might be $10, which is the area of ABE colored in blue. Fifth, now let's find the area of a consumer surplus at the profit maximizing quantity. The CS would be $10, which is the area of CGD colored in pink. Sixth, below what price is a marginal revenue negative and in the inelastic range of demand? The answer would be four, because we can see that the MR is negative below that. Let's solve the last question, finding the allocatively efficient quantity. As we learned that the allocatively efficient quantity is at P equals MC, the answer might be 20. This was the lesson about a monopoly, and I hope it helped you a lot. Thank you very much.